Someone said, flags do not win elections. But tonight, I am confident in what I have seen. And these flags will win the next election. His Excellency President David Granger, Vice President Sidney Alicock, Ministers of the Government, and other colleagues in the APNU AFC list of candidates. In 33 days, Guyana will go to the poll. Guyana will have to make a critical decision whether to vote for one party to form the next government or whether to return the six-party coalition to government. The choice is simple. When David Granger and Moses Nagamutu teamed up in 2015 with a six-party coalition, we had put to an end one-party rule in Guyana. And on March 2nd, we must make sure that one-party rule does not return to our country. One party rule is the recipe for dictatorship. One party rule is the recipe for arbitrariness. One party rule is a return to corruption. When I stepped away from the PPP after 50 years, I stepped out. I stepped out of what is described as the origin stables of corruption. I distanced myself from authoritarian rulers who had joined forces with the drug lords and the criminal underworld and were in league with those in a phantom squad that wreaked havoc in our country, that had made Guyana into the killing fields of the Caribbean. Ralph Ramkaran, a senior member and son of one of the founder members of the PPP, and a former speaker of the National Assembly, he followed me soon afterward when he resigned from the PPP. And at the time of the last election, the son of Chetty Jagan and Janet Jagan, Dr. Chetty Joey Jagan Jr., he joined the coalition platform in 2015 and supported our, our election, and now he has joined us again to support primarily the re-election of David Granger as president. For him and for me, knowing where we have come from, David Granger is the epitome of what you see in the slogan up there of honesty and decency. And that is the governance we need for Guyana. The governance that is honest and decent and leaders of a government who have integrity. You have seen on the stage here, not only do we have persons of integrity and persons of worth 
in the APNU AFC coalition. We have a powerhouse of young people, energetic, Hemraj, an attorney at law, presented you with a case asking you as the jurors to judge on the merit of the performance of this government whether we should not be re-elected. I think he has made a clear case where the verdict is a unanimous yes. And to that you must wave your flag in approval. And Annette Ferguson, Minister, young, dynamic. She was a Ferguson in name and nature. Reminded me of the old type tractor that was good to go, never got tired, and was full of stamina. Is an example of the women who work with our government and who would be candidates in these elections to form one third or more of our slates of parliamentarians and some 40% of our cap ministers who are, now, who are now women. So we want our country to be left in safe hands, in caring hands, in compassionate hands, and above all, in clean hands. An economy that is emerging in Guyana would require these clean hands. Because while last year our coalition government grew the economy by 4.5%. This year, the economy will grow by 86%. There will be a lot of money that will come the way of any government. And you do not want to return to office those with sticky hands. You do not want the dirty hands in the oil cookie jar. They tell you, show us the corruption. I give you one story and I close my case. I have known a young man who when we got into the office of the Prime Minister, He was working in the office of the president. And he came to me. He called me one night. Listen to the story. I'll give you only one story. He said he was asked by Soku to go in. And I said, well, you know, I'm not a practicing lawyer anymore. If you have to go in, take a lawyer. The next morning he came to see me in my office. He told me he went in. And they said they have to investigate. Soku has to investigate his bank accounts. So I said, what kind of money are you talking about? He said, I heard the word 24. I said, 24 million? You got a little more than me. But that's not a big set of money you got there, man. He said, no, 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 PM. It's 24 billion. I asked him, so what did you do to get this 24 billion dollars? He said, you know, while I was permanent secretary, I was doing a little business on the side. 
I said, what kind of business? He said, selling phone card. I said, boy, I don't think the two phone companies make that kind of money, $24 billion. And this was a member of the Central Committee and the Executive Committee of the PPP. And he hold this, held this high government office. So I don't need to be lectured by anyone when you hear you talk about corruption in the PPP. In fact, under Jack Dale and his cronies, children started to spell the word corruption with three P's inside. C-O-R. U P P P T I O N. So this election cannot see the return of the P P P to office. My friends. Esekubo, Pomeroon, Supernam, I stand here tonight because I firmly, sincerely, honestly believe that you would make the difference in the future of our country. That you will examine the performance of our government and you would know that no other government has performed as well as we have in a single term. No other government. And this is the fifth, David Granger is the fifth president I am serving under. So on our record, we should be judged not an emotionalism, not an ethnicity, not on racism, not on sloganeering and promises. The fake presidential candidate, Joey said they have a back man and a front man. They love a backballing. We don't need a backballing government. We don't need backballers. He go, he's going around and he knows only one shoon. And that shoon is, you all know it. I don't have a good voice to sing it. I'm going to try. Me go give you moon girl and me go give you star. Me go give you gold and pick me for my new when you old. You know that song? So that is what you're going around telling people. They will give them the moon and the star. And some of them had to do fertility tests. So they promise you a new picnic for mind you when you're old. That is an old song. It cannot catch you anymore. So we have to look at the record of our government. And you will see today that under David Arthur Granger, we have restored respectability to Guyana. Recently, I represented the president at the United Nations, and Guyana was unanimously elected to be the chairman of the group of 77, and China, 135 countries in the world within the United Nations have agreed for Guyana to be their leader.
And when I met the Secretary General of the United Nations and all the leaders of the United Nations, I affirm that his Guyana's status is due to one man, one person who had gone to the United Nations and committed to the United Nations that we will make a green revolution in Guyana and that we will place Guyana to become the lungs of the world. And this is what the world wants to hear, that Guyana can contribute to saving planet Earth from the disastrous effect of climate change. And because of that, they believe that Guyana needs to be in safe hands in order to help to protect the world. Supernam Pamaroon, you are also the beneficiary of the work of our government. We have invested over $4 billion to shore up the sea defenses in Essequibo and elsewhere from the ravages of the sea. We have spent billions of dollars to renovate the Dawa pumps. And as Hemraj told you, to provide pumps at Lima, to provide pumps at Three Sisters, to be able to provide irrigation for rice farmers. Esriquibo is rice, and rice is Esriquibo. And we are very pleased to say that this year, this year last year, Guyana scored, recorded the highest paddy production and rice production second time, the second highest within five years. This is because we invested in the farmers. When paddy bugs infested the fields, it was this government that declared an emergency I sat there with President Granger when he instructed the Minister of Agriculture to literally declare a state of emergency to fight the paddy bugs, to help the farmers, to provide pesticides, to provide chemicals, and more than that. We put a stop to the practice of rice millers not to pay rice farmers promptly for the paddy. We told them, if you do not pay rice farmers, we will revoke your license. And this has come to a stop. Rice farmers are now getting their money. Perhaps not immediately, but within a reasonable time. It was due to the work of this government and the insistence of this government. No more must we have a situation like happened on the Jagdeo, when Natram and farmers were protesting for monies from rice millers, they tear gas the rice farmers. They arrested them, stripped Nick, Natram naked, and hauled him before the courts. We have a government that is reactive, that is responsive, that is caring, that knows the needs of our people, particularly in the rice industry. And it was the same. You do not grow sugar in Esukibo. But it was the same. And you should know that when we got into office, we spent $38 billion, $1 billion a month to subsidize the sugar industry, to provide, to prevent sugar workers from losing their livelihood and their jobs. And when we took some measures, to streamline the sugar industry, to what you call rationalize it. We saved the jobs of 10,000 sugar workers. And those who could not be retained, they were paid $6 billion as redundancy payments. That is what a responsible government does. But today, I'm here to celebrate with you. 
to celebrate the achievements, some of which have been mentioned by my other colleagues of Pomeroon Supernam Region 2, to celebrate your more recent achievements that for the first time we have today commissioned Radio Esequibo 95.5 FM where Esequibo now has its own radio station the first ever in the history of Guyana you have reached to Maruka, to Akawini, to Wakenham, to Leguan, and soon we will have broadcasts emanating, starting from here, from this region, so we can have two-way communication. You know about the revolution that we have made in telecommunication, where every school has been provided with internet service, where teachers have been given computers, where children have been given tablets to help them in their work, in their studies. And you know the results have been phenomenal. Esukibo is again shining. It is no longer the Cinderella of Guyana. She is the beautiful princess showing off her true colors. In, a, in education, in bring up a new breed of young people. I remember last year, two kids, one named Narain, passed 17 subjects grade, with grade one, and a female, Miss Baksh, passed 13 subjects at the CSEC with grade ones. Anna Regina Secondary School is now being equated with schools in the city. There is extra mural studies here from the university. We want to produce an educated nation, an education nation, a knowledge-driven nation, so that the next revolution that will come, when you dream with me, when you dream with me, and we have a road across the Asukuba River, a bridge across the Asukuba River. When we join with a new bridge across the Marara River. When we will have a, a, river, a bridge across the Quarantine River. When we will have the road completed from Letham to Linden. And there will be a roads connection to link our people to open up lands. And when you will have new types of production into value-added production, into agro-processing, into soya, into other crops that we do not now grow, we will become the enviable food basket of the Caribbean and wider afield. Our government has a plan. We have a vision. And if you think that the progress we have made in the last four plus years have been dazzling, and convincing for you to return us to office, wait until you see when the APNU AFCs return to office after the March 2nd election, you will see unprecedented development, never before. So my friends, I speak to you tonight from the heart. I speak to you to open your eyes, open your ears. This will become the mother of all elections. Your numbers show that the APNU AFC is heading for a resounding victory. But the, the battle is not over until it is over. It is not over until we are victorious. <laughs> Lots of dirty money is floating around and they will try to bribe you. They will try to buy you. They will try to buy your 
ID cards. And keep it until 6 o'clock when the polls are closed. That happened in my village in the quarantine during the local government elections. They will try to ask you, unless GCOM makes a ruling on this issue, to take your phone into the polling booth and to take a picture of how you voted. And if you show a party activist how you voted, you'll be given a Granger or two. Not us. Not us. The other side did that in my village in the quarantine. Be careful of the traps. Be careful of the scams. Be careful of the fraudsters. They will try to steal your vote and they will try to suppress your vote because they know from the flags they see at all of our rallies that victory is inevitable. So they will try to prevent you from going to the polls. Forever. So this is my message to you tonight. That we have had five years in spite of the encouragement of treachery and introducing a Judas element in our democracy. We still maintain an image in the world as a fully democratic country where the parliament is functioning independently, the judiciary is functioning independently, and the executive, which is the presidency, does not interfere. This is one of the rare countries in the world where the press is free and open. Private media flourish alongside the state media. And Guyana does not know of any persecution of journalists. We have no political prisoners. And no one has been charged with treason for trying to overthrow the government. The former government had people in jail. Several persons who were accused of attempting to overthrow the government or to conspire to overthrow the government. But we are an openly democratic country. And that happened under David Arthur Granger. And we must keep it that way. I am pleased to have had the opportunity to serve with President Granger. And I continue to be available for service. My loyalty, I'm a party man. I have said before, I'm a village boy. I'm a whim boy. I said before, I play for the team. I play for the Guyana team. And in this occasion, I pay for the APNU AFC team. We have team players. And we want you to go out there. We want you to go out there and become the foot soldiers. To talk to your neighbors. Use the phone. Don't use threats. Use the phone to convince your neighbors and your friends why they should vote APNU AFC. Because much is at stake in these elections. Much is at stake if we do not lose when this time we lose everything. We lose our future. We cannot allow this to happen. Return APNU AFC to office. Return David Granger as president of Guyana. I thank you. God bless you. Forever. Forever.